What is up, ladies and gentlemen? But most of all, you ladies out there, thanks for clicking on another episode of Break the Silence. I am your host, Cyborg. Nets Clippers, let's talk about it. So look out! Okay, so we just had a very entertaining mid-Saturday afternoon game between the Brooklyn Nets and the Los Angeles Clippers. Two teams that were title contenders to start the season high in the odds and had question marks at this point in the season for different reasons. So we're going to get into both teams. I want to break them down. And I also just want to talk about Kevin Durant because he's unbelievable and deserves to be talked about. This Nets team seems to really be turning it around. And let's talk about why. But first, please take a second to like and subscribe to the channel. We're growing so fast. We're grinding. You see how many videos we're posting. Just please, if you would, take a second, hit that little button. Would help your boy out a ton. I would appreciate it. But let's get straight into it. First off, I want to start with the Brooklyn Nets here. Um, because I think that's truly the story of today's game. Kyrie Irving, as we know, has been suspended, I think, this is either the fifth or sixth straight game that he's been suspended for the Brooklyn Nets. Their defense seems to have completely turned around. Tonight, they held the Los Angeles Clippers to 95 points. They held the New York Knicks to 85 points, the Mavericks to 96, the Hornets to 94, and the Wizards to 86. You're talking about a team that had year after year one of the worst defenses in the entire NBA. And over the last five games, without Steve Nash, without Kyrie Irving, this team has completely turned it around and is playing de playing real defense at an elite level. And that's what we thought we may be getting from the Brooklyn Nets as they brought in guys like Royce O'Neal, Ben Simmons, even though he struggled tonight. But you were hoping to see improvements on the defensive side of the basketball. Kevin Durant can handle the offensive side. And when you have, and I'm going to get into the offense here in a second, so let's wait on that. But defensively, uh, they're playing Ed Sumner, Joe Harris, Nick Claxton, Royce O'Neal, Kevin Durant, um, Seth Curry, Ben Simmons, Cam Thomas, and Patty Mills got significant minutes for the Brooklyn Nets tonight. And this is a team that sometimes it's not about uh, someone being a bad coach. And it's hard to determine whether Steve Nash was a good coach or a bad coach. I feel like he was dealt one of the most difficult hands of any coach in NBA history. But... Sometimes you just need a new voice to reconnect with the players in the locker room to bring a new energy, a new emphasis on the defensive end of the ball. What I've always said and what I will always continue to say is that defense is 75% coaching and effort. Yes, your size, your skill, your personnel does matter, but playing hard on a night-to-night -night basis, closing out on shooters, making your rotations, fighting through screens... Yes, your defensive scheme matters as far as are you going to switch, you're going to do drop coverage, all sorts of things of, of that nature and, and more intricacies, but it comes down to effort. That's what it comes down to a lot of the time. And this Nets team is playing much, much better defensively. And do you want to put that on Kyrie Irving? Do you want to put that on Steve Nash? You take your pick or just a team that's playing re-inspired. To me, at this point, you have to look at this team and say, hey, it's time to move on from Kyrie Irving. When they are have the ability to just play basketball, to just go out there and play basketball, this team looks like it's it's one of the most fun teams in the NBA to watch because they got Kevin Durant, who we all know who Kevin Durant is. And, and if you remember his quote, you know who I am, I'm Kevin Durant. But you have Kevin Durant and you surrounded him with three elite shooters on the court at almost all times. And then Nick Claxton, who's playing who played fantastic today. By the way, Nick Claxton gave you 13 points and 14 rebounds and defensively had three blocks and a steal. So defensively played really well, is developing into that rim protector. Um, I'm very glad they got rid of DeAndre Jordan. He played against the Celtics last night. He plays for the Nuggets. Was terrible. It was, it's time to move on from Jordan. But Nick Claxton balled out defensively, holding down their paint defense, and the rest of the guys are just playing hard on the perimeter. Kevin Durant... When he wants to be, or well, sometimes he's, he has such an offensive load that it's hard for 
to give as much energy on the defensive end of the court, but he can be a very, very good defensive player. So you take Kyrie Irving from this mix, you take away some of the drama, you take Steve Nash out of there, you have a coach that comes in, pushes defense, pushes effort, a team that's now motivated, is starting to get on a roll. This team is a legitimate basketball team now. And I love that for the Brooklyn Nets, they're very fun to watch. And Kevin Durant's such a good teammate. The way that uh, Nick Claxton got an and one and Kevin Durant hypes him up. Um, St- Seth Curry, let me talk for Seth Curry. I would take on any NBA team in the league, and I think that he makes that team way better. Yes, he's overshadowed by his brother being Steph, and yes, Seth Curry is typically coming off the bench. Tonight, he had 22 points, and you're talking about a guy who is an absolute sniper from the three point line, and not only at set shots, he's he can sometimes hit those step backs, he hits contested shots, he can drive to the rim, hit little mid ranges. You're offensively, Seth Curry's an excellent basketball player. So if you've got Kevin Durant on the court with Seth Curry, Joe Harris, Royce O'Neal, and Claxton, which is who they ended this game with, the Brooklyn Nets are a real basketball team. And you're finally looking at a real roster that's playing hard. And I just can't say enough good things about Kevin Durant. I think he's fantastic. I think Kevin Durant at his best for the last 15 years has been, you know, one of the top three players in the NBA. And... I think that when Kyrie Irving's not there, he's able to highlight that and show his skill set. Now, I'm still concerned Ben Simmons is giving you nothing. You're talking about paying a guy a max contract that's giving you nothing. And then Kyrie Irving, you're probably going to have to cut, send home, because I don't know that he has any real trade value. So Kyrie Irving, I'm not sure what you're going to do there. Let's move on to the other side of the ball, because this is actually my first time watching the Clippers this year. Obviously, I have to pick and choose what games I'm watching. They're on the West Coast. A little hard to watch some of those games. Because I'm over here, the eastern part of the U.S. But um, the Clippers have are ranked the second worst offense in the entire NBA. And the big question there, well, when Kawhi gets back, will this team improve? We have to legitimately question, is Kawhi Leonard, is there something more going on with his knee? Do you remember uh, a player named Brandon Roy? Played for the Portland Trail Blazers. And I'm not saying that Kawhi is the same injury, but a guy who was a elite basketball player... And his career just kind of had to end because injuries kind of just got to the point where he couldn't play through them anymore. I'm starting to worry that whatever Kawhi Leonard has going on, and they actually called it degenerative. I've heard reports out of the Clippers camp that they're worried that it's degenerative, that his knee is only going to get worse. It's not improving. You're talking about a guy that missed a year and a half for an ACL injury and is still not healthy from it. Um, Adrian Peterson came back and was leading the league in rushing in six months after an ACL injury. Now we know Kawhi's a little bit of a different um, man when it comes to playing through injuries. He wants to make sure he's healthy, which I don't blame him at all. But if he's never going to get back to that point where he feels comfortable playing basketball again, can the Clippers just say, let's wait till Kawhi's back? And they're kind of at a point where this is now the fourth year of fourth or fifth year of the Paul George, Kawhi Leonard um, experiment. They brought in a lot of good players. They brought in Norman Powell. They brought in um, Zubach is a nice player. Marcus Morris, Reggie Jackson, John Wall. They have players around them that are actually quality basketball players. But if Kawhi Leonard never comes back, then this Clippers team will never even compete for what we thought it might be. And he was coming off the bench to start the season. So I don't know if they plan to start him at any point, but I have real concerns about this Clippers team. Paul George really struggled tonight. Um, he's 5 of 21. They're 7 and 6. Uh, Paul George is excellent. They're well coached. And they have good basketball players. But when you're talking about the ceiling of the Clippers, without Kawhi Leonard on the roster, what is it? The compete in the first round? Maybe second round is their ceiling? Because the Western Conference is a little open. But I'm definitely worried about the Los Angeles Clippers. Um, Zubach played really well tonight, gave you 16 and 15. Marcus Morris played all right. Paul George, like I said, struggled. Um, but offensively, they're just, they're pretty painful to watch. Uh, it, it's a lot of Paul George. John Wall, you know, he ended up with 14 points, but it felt like there were like three plays in a row in the first or second quarter that he drove and got blocked on all of them. He is still explosive, um, but not quite not the explosive player that he used to be. And he's not a very good three-point shooter. So tonight he hit five shots. Two of them were threes. And I think that's only his ninth and 10 threes of the season. So 
Um, he only hit three shots that weren't three pointers. And the old John Wall used to be able to get the get to the paint at will, either kick out or attack the basket. And so obviously we've seen a drop off there. And we were talking about some of these guys that you add. Obviously, when you add John Wall, you know you're not getting the old guy, but the the old guy that he used to be. But you do kind of have a hope, and it's the same thing that you have with a lot of these like waiver wire pickups or guys that haven't really been good in a couple years. You kind of hope that they can add something to your roster. For instance, if you remember the Cleveland Cavaliers when they had LeBron added uh, Darren Williams, and all the Cavs fans were like, "Oh, we got we got D Will. We're gonna turn this around," and not really realizing that he was clearly washed and didn't really add anything to their squad. But Los Angeles Clippers. Yes, their record's good, but without Kawhi Leonard, their ceiling is low. Their ceiling's low. They play good defense. But the Brooklyn Nets, if they continue to defend at this level, and you have Kevin Durant on the offensive end, you're going to be a team that competes. You're going to compete at a high level. The Eastern Conference, some of those teams have question marks. The Bucks can't stay healthy. Uh, the Celtics, you know, struggling a little defensively. The Cavs are on a little bit of a skid, and then the Hawks are up and down. So can you get yourself into that competition? Can you get yourself into that 4-5 seed before the season ends and truly compete once the playoffs come around? Very interested to see what happens. Appreciate y'all watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Cyborg out.